Well, check us here. Leon stage two was a hilly affair, up and down all day. Here's a break, 50 seconds. That's a lie. But it was a pretty interesting sort of pre welter warm up race. Not as traditional as the Vuelta at Burgos, but quite a lot of people, you know, will have a big altitude champ camp during the tour in Lavinio, for example. Do this and then do Burgos. So anyway, the first stage was a sprint stage won by Giacomo Zolo. I'm probably going to make a video on that. I didn't realize that this was televised and not on Eurosport, so it meant I could do some do some uh, highlights of it. So anyway, this breaks out front. It's going to get caught. 27k to go is sort of the main climb. Uh, I believe it's about a 5k climb at 5%. Uh, with a couple of ramps, it's sort of hard to tell on some of these races exactly how accurate the stage profile is. However, it suffice to say uh, that it is pretty hilly. Um, going around this corner, you can see they're trying to take out as many motorbikes as possible. Yeah, so this was a 5k climb at 5% and the next one was 2.4k at 4%. There's a bit of gravel um, and there were sort of rolling climbs all day, uh, but nothing too steep. Anyway, this break is going to get caught irrelevant. The people you've got to watch out for, Nibali, Yates... Uh, Chavez, Carthy, those would I'd say are the, my main favourites. Um, there are a couple others who who are decent, um, like maybe Ben Holmes, Jan Polanch. People were saying this is sort of what Pro Cycling Stats was was suggesting could be good. Uh, but in reality, you know Simon Yates is definitely the absolute favourite here, uh, followed by Hugh Carthy. There was also like Ryan, sorry George Bennett, and a couple other decent climbers, but no one absolutely bonkers. Anyway, you can see the motorbikes are flying out. That's because it's not 50 seconds. We're going to pan back in a minute and you're going to see an absolute rampaging peloton going up this climb. Now, this climb, in reality, there shouldn't be much separation. You can see actually Nibali's already going on the attack. Nibali looked super, super good, actually. I was quite surprised how, how fresh he looked and how strong he was going. You can see a Movistar riders following him. No Bala, unfortunately, but I think Bala should be back for the world, which is exciting. Um, but Nibali's on the radio and you can see here, I believe this is Dion Smith. I earlier thought it was Christian Yenzo, but he actually wasn't racing. Dion Smith goes to the front. This is on a slight, slight downhill section, and he just puts it in the gutter, basically. Around this corner, just goes so hard out of it. And you can see everyone else has already gapped after that Nibli acceleration, sort of onto a downhill, but then out of this corner, everyone's on the absolute limit. You know, they're probably doing nine, 10 watts per kilo up this sort of false flat. I mean, it's really not very steep. You can see that they're in... Um, in the, all in the big ring for a long way and Yates just decides he has to look around and says I'm gonna go Nibali tries to follow but like quite quickly realizes that it's not going to happen um which is interesting because I mean he sits down here and Yates just sort of goes and just keeps going and it's unbelievable like look at the gap he's got already I think on these stages when Yates is in his top form he's as good a climber as the gap you might laugh at me but Prato de Tivo he was literally doing the same watts per kilo which like 6.3 for 40 like last year in Torino, like he is ridiculous. Now we are going to zoom a little bit further forward. Um, I sort of did some self editing on the YouTube uh, because I'm having some issues editing at the moment. I need to get back Premiere Pro. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Yates has now got a big gap. There's there's not really too much time indications at the moment, but there's a large group behind. Like actually, they all sort of coalesce, um, and there's a lot of people trying to chase him back. And to be honest, it shouldn't suit him. Like it's false flat. You know this climb okay maybe not false flat that's a bit rude but you know it's five percent and then the rest of it is sort of rolling up and down and not something you traditionally associate with yates however yates is actually a pretty strong time trialist to be honest um he's obviously won you know world tour tts before he like he won the giro stage he also then won um the stage in paris nice as well so he is pretty good at time trialing and i guess you know if you're doing 400 watts for 20 or for probably 420 for 20 um, you're going to be pretty good at climbing, uh, sorry, going on the flat as well, especially when you've got CDA as small as his. So we sort of zoom forward and you can see it's just like, just Yates, Yates, Yates. And there's no, no sort of indication of um, of how far back everyone else is. But I think it goes to show that they didn't really need to show anyone else because Yates was just absolutely flying and no one was really close. You can see he's got decently deep section rims on actually. He's probably on like 50s or something, which is interesting. Sort of a, goes to show that disc brake bikes maybe not as heavy as they used to be and people do want to run slightly deeper rims um but yeah on the tcr looking pretty pretty nice out the saddle like he should be a favorite for the welter if he's going um i think there's a fair few tt kilometers however uh i think up to altitude like 2600 meter stage that's going to be pretty tasty he's quite good at altitude actually um well not unreal but decent this is sort of the the stragglers you can see the team cars are coming up george bennett is in the second group i believe this is jan paul number 32 
Uh, I might be wrong on that. Uh, but anyway, we can also see like Alessandro Bisolti for Drone Hopper and some others who are getting spat. You can see the team cars. I don't really know why they're forming this angle, but they, it's good to show that it is in ribbons behind. Like although Yates looks very composed up front and sort of hard to tell how fast he's going, I feel like you get a better indication of how fast it is when you look behind and everyone's getting spat. But you can see this is a massively big ring climb. He's absolutely motoring up this climb. I think it's a bit rude for him to turn up. I mean, obviously the reason he turns up is for a bit of training, but also for some sweet, sweet UCI points. Uh, the man picked up 125 for winning GC today, and he also picked up 20 for winning the stage, which is 145 points for a day's work. Obviously raced yesterday, but you know didn't didn't pick up any points. I think bike exchange might have done. So a pretty decent outing for him. Um, I think Yates often goes well in the heat, despite being from Berry, which is extremely cold and rainy. He doesn't enjoy that weather at all and actually goes very well in the heat. He's now sort of climbing out the saddle like Pantani and it is uh, pretty pretty nice to see. We're going to zoom forward a little bit more just because um, there's so we just want to see the, the group behind. But we'll we'll get on to that in a minute because the group behind is actually gets quite organised. But he's just got too much gas. And, I, I you know, you did imagine on a 5% climb that actually, you know, the gas here, like, look at this peloton. It is huge. Um, I believe that is actually the second group. The first group is up here. But on a 5% climb, you'd imagine that, you know, if you're swapping off turns, you know, you should be able to gain a lot of speed on an individual rider. But you can see Yates went past that a fair few kilometers ago. He's got some teammates in here. I believe that's Daniel Munoz as well, potentially, for the Ron Hopper, uh, which is good to see. And a young, another young Colombian uh, on Gianni Savio's team. We're now sort of going to 21 kilometers to go. And Yates is looking pretty strong still. A lot of people coming up giving some time gaps and uh yeah i mean there's not much chance of him really getting caught uh i believe there was attack behind which we're about to see but the thing is when you when it's an individual rider like this you know there is a reason why they're up front even if you're working behind it's because they're the strongest rider it's the same in classics like you know if they if the people behind were as strong as yates they, they'd be with him like but they're obviously not so you go to the krm point here with 167.5k in the legs, it was actually a decently long stage, around 190k, which is a pretty, I mean, obviously it's only a two-day stage race, but it's pretty decent. Anyway, we've got some aerial footage, but we're about to see the back of the peloton. You can see they're motoring along a decent amount, and you'd, you'd again imagine that they, they should be able to catch if they were strong enough, but I guess it's just like on a flying day like Yates, you know, sub Yates for Poggy and that sort of thing. So you can see he's behind Bennett, Caicedo, Ponama, Umba, sorry, I think it was Umba for uh, Andrew and Hopper, who actually won the stage in Tour d'Alsace about this time last year, up the planche de Belfi, Sean Bennett, um, Figueiredo, um, who I guess was riding for one of the one of those smaller teams. Um, but yeah, I guess there's also not too much cooperation either because there's not many teammates. There's no real reason why you actually would want to would want to cooperate but here you can see George Bennett managed to extricate, extricate, him, extricate himself sorry, uh, from the group and this and actually managed to drop the guy, the rider behind him or I think is a human powered health rider um, and then you can really see that the gaps the how big the gaps are so 13.6k one minute left one minute between them and there's only George Bennett chasing and to be honest like if George Bennett had the legs he'd be able to go with him so on the flat they're similar weight Yates might be slightly smaller but looks a bit more aero, or a, lot, a lot more aero than George Bennett and to be honest there's no competition at this point and uh Simon Yates has it easily you can see that it's a fast run in as well which means it's even harder to to keep up or to gain time because when the speed is so high you need so much more power to actually go like you know even just one or two kilometers an hour faster um which is what he needs to do anyway it's sort of nice left right running Yates is in control Hop goes over the speed bump and is coming towards the finish of this race and, you know, a resounding win for Yates, a resounding win for Bike Exchange. They look like they're not getting relegated, which is obviously great news for them. And Yates looks like he's probably getting, well, he is getting a new nice contract at Bike Exchange. I'd like to see him go somewhere else, um, maybe to one of the bigger teams, uh, to see what he can do. Because I think he, he should be able to win another Grand Tour if he plays his cards right. But I don't always think his support in Bike Exchange is the best. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy this video. And I'll see you in the next one.